Well, here in San Francisco, the uh, insane people who run the city are devolving more rapidly into uh, mental illness. Not only have they met the Board of uh, Stinking Visors to talk about the sanctuary city policies that led to the killing of Kate Steinle, and before that, of course, there was a father and two sons executed in San Francisco by a Mr. Ramos, another fine immigrant. The maniacs who run the city or want to expand the city's sanctuary city possible. Now, as you know, the sanctuary city policy of San Francisco was responsible for the presence of an illegal alien who last year shot and killed a poor innocent woman, Catherine Steinle, who was just sightseeing with her father in San Francisco. Uh, a few years ago, Mr. Ramos, uh, another wonderful prize immigrant, gang member, of course, who had been in prison a few times, released by the psycho-liberals, uh, went on a rampage and killed a father and his two sons right in front of the mother. I raised money for that woman, by the way. That's a long time ago. You won't find it anywhere. But here we are. The sanctuary city's policies have led to the numerous murders and crime from the Harvard criminals. Trump is the only visionary out there who is saying well, it's time to end sanctuary cities and why they hate them. I mean, if you were a gangbanger, would you want Trump to be president? If you were someone who was making a fortune as a criminal lawyer bringing in illegal aliens by gaming the system as an immigration lawyer, who, by the way, are the worst variety of lawyers in the world, don't get me started on immigration lawyers, because if I ever advise Trump, they go to jail. They go to prison. All the immigration lawyers in San Francisco are called before a judge in a grand jury, and their crimes are held up for all to see what they have done in tricking the system with false marriages, fake green cards, uh, the welfare, the food stamps, their assets are seized and they're put into prison or they're deported. That's just to put the fear of God into them. This could happen, by the way. There's no question in my mind that Trump is probably going to be the next president. Whether he comes on this show or not is irrelevant to me. And the reason I say that is Hillary got half the support in the primaries yesterday that she got in the last time she ran for office. And according to the latest polls, half the Bernie Sanders voters say that if she's the candidate, they will vote for Trump. He's going to win by a landslide, as I told you. I told you that before the primaries. I'm telling you that again. He will be the next president. And when he is president, all hell is going to break loose in this country because all of these left-wing gangsters who have used the law and social services to game the system and rob the taxpayer, they're going to be fleeing. They're going to be fleeing this country because their crimes will be exposed. There will be committees formed. There will be congressional hearings on them. And they will probably go to prison, many of them, for the for the outright thievery that they have conducted over these last number of years. They know it better than we do because they know how much money they have stolen by gaming the system. They know how many illegal aliens they have brought into this country who don't belong here. They know how many false marriages they have arranged. They know how many green cards they purchased for these illegal aliens. They will be found out and they will be tried. And so, again, we come back to the issue of the day. We have uh, an issue of illegal immigration we have the issue of the culture wars and people don't know who to turn to they, they don't seem to have any representation trump seemed to be the man s-e-e-m-e-d s-e-e-m-e-d past tense but something's happened with donald trump since he won those five big states haven't heard from him on the savage nation have you oh no no he's on every other show in the world now we haven't asked him on i haven't he hasn't asked to be on, and he's moved so far to the center on so many issues, it's hard to know where he stands at all. So we're hoping Donald Trump comes back on the Savage Nation and tells us that Big Daddy hasn't gone away. Big Daddy is still there for us. Big Daddy's still going to build the wall. Big Daddy is still going to keep the Muslims out. Big Daddy is still going to fight the culture war, but I doubt it. I know where it's going. I've seen it coming. I know who the advisors are. Yes, that's true. And if you think we have no troubles, let me play you a soundbite that was uh, just given by Vicente Fox, who's becoming an increasingly unhinged lunatic by the day. He's the former president of Mexico. For some reason, he thinks he's the leader of the, of the entire North American Free Trade Association. He may be, in fact. I don't know who he represents. But Vicente Fox has taken on America, hates America, hates Americans, attacks Americans, tells us that we have to take in all of the unwashed and poor of Mexico and take care of them. 
because their country can't do so. Listen to Vicendi Fox threatening war in the following clip. We're coming back to the era of the ugly American, which was the gringo was hated all around the world. <laughs> and this guy, pretty soon he got the title now. Yeah. He is the ugly American. He is the hated gringo because yeah. he's attacking all of us. He's offending all of us. I imagine, I mean, that could take us to a war, not to a trade war. I can tell you, in Mexico, we have a saying. We say, okay, we are chiquitos. Yeah. We're small, but we're Picassos. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're like the jalapeno. <laughs> oh, so oh, don't play around don't with us. That. Don't play around with us. We can jump walls. We can swim <laughs> rivers. And we can defend ourselves. So from God, guns and gays to Mexicans, Muslims, and Metro. So now we have, now we know exactly why we need a wall with Mexico. It's to keep out people like Vicente Fox, keep him on the other side of the border because the man is a warmonger and a maniac who hates America. He actually thinks that we're a bunch of patsies who can't defend our own nation. They've gotten away with it for so long. They have so trampled on our borders, on our language and our culture that they think that that's a status quo. It's a given. How dare you tell us that we can't spit on your culture? How dare you tell us that we can't dance on your flag and wave the Mexican flag? How dare you tell us that we have to learn English? No, gringo. You are the hated American. No, gringo. You are the hated American. No, gringo. You are the gringo. Did you find that speech weird, that he threatened war, that if Trump wins, there's going to be a war with Mexico? Are you concerned about that? Well, you can hear by Vicente Fox speech... I wasn't wrong when I said that we care about Mexicans. Some of them are quite imperialistic. And, uh, frankly, uh, there's a lot of racism coming over the border. There's certainly cultural imperialism. There's an overt racism in La Raza. It says the race. But I know we're not supposed to say that. We're supposed to shy away from the obvious. After all, the only racist can be of a certain race, uh, uh according to everyone else on the planet. That's called... Uh, cultural suicide or genocide, self-genocide. It's a self-genocide going on in the West, by the way, beaten up by the uh, radical communities into having any pride in themselves. They're now being stepped on by everyone in the world. So here we are, but we have quite a long way to go between now and December, and then, of course, the big question will be, let's say Trump wins. I've raised this before. Do you actually think he's going to build a wall? Do you actually think he's going to ban Muslims? Do you actually think he's going to do half the things he says he's going to do? I'm wondering right now. I'm not turning on him, don't get me wrong. Uh, I don't stick my face in a plate of cornflakes uh, like some in the television and radio do. But the question is, who is Donald Trump? Now that I see the direction he's going, and now he's raising money in L.A., did you see that story? I know he said he wasn't going to take any money from people, but now it's already they're out to raise a billion dollars. All right, that day had to come. He said he wasn't going to take money. Some people are saying he said he wasn't taking money uh, for the primary. All right, fine. Of course he had to raise money. But the question is, who is advising him now? Who is, who's advising Donald Trump? We read that Rudy Giuliani is advising him. Is Rudy Giuliani a conservative? No, he isn't. He's a, he's a big city liberal. A good man, a fine man, his better days are behind him. We understand that. But Giuliani is not the conservative that you would want advising Donald Trump if you want borders, language, and culture, is he? Who else is advising him? Well, you've got Jeff Sessions, who is a conservative. Fine, but I'm afraid that Jeff Sessions has already been marginalized by the very same advisors who worked for Mitt Romney and Bob Dole. I think it's the same people, by the way, who have suddenly wormed their way into the Trump inner circle, in my opinion. And uh, we'll have to wait and see. And I don't know whether he's going to be back on the show. I haven't asked them once since the victory. If they want to be on this show, they know where to reach me. I'll go on without him, and he'll go on without me, I'll tell you that. But the question is, why the sudden drop-off of interest in this audience? That's what I want to know. Why the sudden drop off in interest of the Savage Nation audience? Do they forget that you're going to vote in November or not vote in November? Have they forgotten that already? You know, I saw this before. They assume that the conservative base will come out no matter what because Hillary is such a threat. That's a very, very dangerous assumption to make because the conservative base was burned by Boehner, by McConnell, by Paul Ryan. 
and they're liable to not come out and vote. And let me tell you something. He's not going to win without the conservative base. And if he continues to tack to the center or even to the left in order to appeal to the great undecided, he's going to lose the base and he'll lose the election. That's what's going to happen. And that's a little free advice. I didn't need to be invited to Trump Tower for that. And whoever listens to this show for Donald Trump, I hope that you write it down and send it to the to the man himself because his advisors will shaft him unless you are careful. I've seen it before. I can name who it was done to. She came on this show like uh, a true conservative, Michelle Bachman. She complained that uh, Nancy Pelosi was out to get her. She appealed to my audience. My audience is the kindest audience in talk radio history. They sent her a ton of money in her congressional campaign. She won again, and then she became an enemy of the savage nation. And where is she now? She's on the du in the dustbin of history. Why? Because the people are not that stupid. The problem is the advisors continue to think you're that stupid. The advisors continue to think that the audience to this show and other conservative shows are stupid, that you don't really know what's going on, that you're easily manipulated, that uh, you have to vote for him or else you'll get Hillary and they're going to continue to do Hillary is the devil. I'm not so sure that's going to work because unless we are sure that we're going to get our money's worth, I don't think we're going to that theater. That's what I think is going to happen. And I really hope that the original people who listened to this show religiously and reported on it to Mr. Trump have not decided to start not listening to this show because now is the time to start listening to this show. Because without the savage nation, you're not going to be president. That's my opinion. Will he build a wall? Will he ban Muslims from entering America? Will he cut taxes for the middle class and raise them on the hedge funders? And those at Microsoft and Facebook who use the triple Dutch or the triple Irish tax techniques to evade taxes? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I haven't heard much about that. 